Howdy, everybody. My name is Pat Baldwin. Um, I've been working with Mission Morton Grove for the last uh, few months, and I'd love to teach you a little bit about the presentation we gave um, in the middle of February, uh, Andrew and I gave on native prairie gardens. So um, you'll see a tiny URL, hopefully on the side or <laughs> behind my face, of the link to the presentation so you can use the slides for whatever you need. Beautiful. There it is here. So to kick things off, um, there's many benefits to native gardens. Some of the biggest parts are that they're relatively low maintenance, both in terms of the amount of work you get later on, um, but especially for the amount of maintenance that's required for um, fertilizers, pesticides, and water. Um, it's a really low impact way to create a garden. You don't have to fertilize or pesticide. Um, use pesticides. Um, and what I've learned is if um, you look at our normal lawns, turf grass lawns, there's about 10 times more chemical pesticides per acre than farmlands. And if you think about all the, the, the mowing that we do and the leaf blowers and all the tools that are used to just cut grass to about that tall, it's an amazing carbon footprint that we have. So if you end up turning a lot of that into native gardens, you can eliminate a big carbon footprint that we have. Um, it's another way to put nature ahead of humans too. So it can reduce air pollution. Um, again, back to like no mowing, no leaf blowers, anything like that. Um, we can also take carbon from the atmosphere and set it or sequester it into the soils, which is wonderful. Um, and the biggest benefit that I like seeing is um, some of the wildlife that can be shelter or food for wildlife. Anything from native bees, other pollinators, host plants for many insects. Um, a lot of the beneficial insects that we see use native plants as a place to overwinter. Um, and one of the big things that you get out of a native garden too is more bugs, which then leads to more birds. Um, we've converted a chunk of our gardens over to native um, native plants the last few years, and we don't put out any bird seed, but we have a constant stream of birds in our garden year-round. Um, and last but not least, like, they're beautiful, they're really cool looking plants. Uh, here we go. Um, one of the another big impacts that we have is that um, if you compare it to turf grass, turf grass only lets a little bit of water infiltrate into the soil. So if you look at a root system of our typical Kentucky blue stem, um, it's only down a few inches. Everything below that is compacted soil that's really tough for water to permeate. When you start moving towards your native plants, you get roots that are 10, 15, 20 feet deep that really allow a pathway for water to flow through the soil. And it makes the soil a really large reservoir to hold water. So that makes it so there's less flooding that takes place in our rivers. There's less pollutants that get to our streams as well. Um, if the water's soaking into the soil, anything that it picks up along the way gets absorbed through the soil and doesn't make it through, make its way to rivers and streams through runoff through our sewer systems, which is really incredible. A lot of times, whatever you see above the surface in your garden, you've got more than that below the surface since they've put a lot of energy and a lot of nutrients into storing sugars and storing carbon underneath the surface. And especially when those roots start to die off and they grow new roots, those old canals start adding organic matter to the soil, which is a good place to store carbon. Sorry, my clicker's not working as well as I would like it to. Here we go. So a couple of tips for getting started on this. Um, depends on what type of garden you've set yourself up with first. But first, observe your space. Take a look at the sunlight. You can grow native plants in any type of conditions. It can be full sunlight, partial sunlight. It can be full shade. Take a look at your soil type. Um, there's some easy tests you can get um, online. You can do a hand test just by feeling it. If you look up soil type test or soil type by feel, you can figure out if you've got around here mostly sandy loams or clayey loams. Um, sometimes you get a lot more clay. Sorry, not as much sandy loam, we get more clay loam. You can look into the amount of moisture you have. Depending on local topography, you might have really wet or really dry spots or moist or partially drained. Um, on our property, which we have like just a normal lot in Morton Grove, we've got everything from full sunlight to full shade and everything in between. 
Mostly we've got um, clay loams. We have a little bit of patch where it's sandy just because of some of the fill that was put in around the border of our house. And we've got anything from dry to like almost standing water wet throughout the year. So depending on how you want to get your bed together, you can either just convert an existing bed or if you want to convert some lawn space, you can do a process called sheet composting, which allows for layers of cardboard, some sort of organic, ma organic matter like leaves and compost, or you can just cover it straight up with cardboard, kill off some of the grass and then turn it into a uh, garden future. Um, if it's a bigger project too, you can rent a sod cutter, cost a little bit of money, use a little bit of carbon, um, but it can be a really quick way to convert turf grass um, into garden. Next tip is uh, pick your plants. There's a whole bunch of considerations, but you want to start looking into well, when does it bloom? You want a good range of bloom times throughout the year so you give a good food source for a lot of your local insects. Um, a good color variety, just because. Um, you might be looking into different textures, different heights. If you're right by a walkway, it's always a little bit shorter you want to go, just so you don't have things flopping over onto your walkway. Um, or if you don't want to block windows or anything like that. Also looking into your balance between grasses and flowers. Usually about a 60-40 mix. Um, and the reason why we like a lot of grasses, you get a lot more infiltration, you get more year-round coverage, the grasses look great in the winter, um, but also it helps shade out the weeds. It gives you a lot of your filler that you've got. And they're really good for uh, host plants, for beneficial insects as well. Kind of a tip too, um, a lot of the local garden centers like a Home Depot or Menards, they sell native plants, but they're hybrids. Those are ones you usually want to avoid because they don't always act as host plants for some of our native bug species. Um, they're good for a lot of other things, but for those host plants, the bugs don't like really living in them over the winters. So here's an example of a space that was Andrew's backyard that he's converted into a native garden. So he's got a wide variety of heights and textures and colors. Um, he's cool with having a little bit over the uh, walkway, which is great. I love having something like that. So this is a little bit more uh, wild look. You can have a much more um, maintained classical garden look if you wish. I love having something like this though. I would love for my background to look like this. This was some of the conversion I did at my house. Um, we had turf grass up to a standard um, like walkway to our front door. We rented a sod cutter for this one and we're trying to maintain it as more of a classic garden look just because it's in the front was the vibe we're going with. Probably it's going to turn into a little bit more chaotic and hectic over time which I'm totally cool with. So this is the end product right before we started planting um, and from here we could buy uh, plants, we could plug them in, we could have done a seed mix that would really lower our costs. Um, that's a new garden we're going to do over the summer is we're going to do a seed mix um, just to really drop our costs and give us a little bit more variety in our plants. And speaking of plants, there's a whole bunch of different plants and like I said earlier, you want to try and get different um, coverage during the different seasons from spring, summer, fall, and definitely grasses everywhere in between. Um, so some of these are real common, some of them are less common, but it's always great to have just a couple of options of things you'd love to see in your yard. So there's a bunch of different, um, a bunch of different Vision Morton Grove projects we could potentially work on. Um, one thing is creating a seed library. Oh no, I lost my camera. You can still hear me, I hope. Um, a seed library through the Morton Grove Public Library where you can bring seeds in, they'll host them, people can like check out seeds. Um, but it's a cheap way, free way for people to start gardens. Um, you can get your native garden um, certified through conservation at home. There's some village codes present that um, allow or don't allow for different projects, um, especially in some of our parkways, actually not allowed to garden in the parkway. Um, there's always buckthorn to take out. There's a project through the Morton Grove Park District where it's Park Pride Weekends. I said adopt the park, but you get it. Um, where you can work on gardening and we're trying to increase the amount of natives there. There's plenty of others you could have. Um, and here's some resources. A couple places to buy plants on the left here. Um, and you can link these into the presentations. A couple of books you can check out. There's wonderful readings online. Um, and if anybody wants plants too, at my house, we'll be splitting some plants in the spring. So take a look at the list, uh, reach out to me, and um, yeah, we can figure out a way to get you some of these plants. This will be free. We're just 
trying to thin out our herd a little bit and make it a little bit more manageable and add some more diversity to our gardens too. So just a couple of nice quick quotes I'll go through and then I got some quick, um, some pictures at the end, but this is all the, all the info we're going with. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and get to know some of your neighbors that are gardening with some really cool plants around. I like this one. The oldest task in human history is to live on a piece of land without spoiling it. So I went through some plants here. If you're interested, this is a, an Ohio spider ward at Andrew's house. Uh, this is a cup plant, which um, is really beneficial for all kinds of species. You'll see yellow a lot in these native gardens. One of the most common or the most common color in the native garden. It's also home to finches after rainstorms. The little cups catch the rainwater um, and they're a good seed source for the, the finches to eat. I think we counted five on here too. Uh, oh, he told me the name of this one, but I forgot what it was. I'm going to guess Joe Pieweed is my guess. Another great one to have around. This is an example of a garden that we did some uh, sheet mulching on. One of my favorite plants, Rattlesnake Master. We've got asters in here, some Black Eyed Susan, um, a little bit of coneflower. There's a, oh, what is this one? Wild Quinine, which is another really cool one. And a bunch of grasses, sedges, butterfly weed mixed in here. You got smokeweed, butterfly weed with the great host of um, the monarch butterfly. This is the caterpillar for it. It's another thing like my kids love playing in the gardens. There's always bugs, caterpillars. There's always something cool that they get around each turn. So you get to learn a lot more about all the insects that start to visit your property, which is super cool. Um, there's actually been a native cactus that grows really well in my full sun sandy side of my house um, that just flowered for the first time this year and some other nice looking plants. So if you've got questions, again, feel free to reach out. We're loving um, learning more about some of the gardeners in our communities. And um, yeah, we hope you think about turning some of your garden or some of your lawn, ideally, uh, into some native spaces where we've got a little bit more uh, benefits that we see throughout. So thanks a lot. Have a great day.